kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, So basically everything, anything that you can think of besides a traditional mortgage um, and cash is yeah. creative financing. Yeah, pretty much. That's, I mean, you can even do a cash deal as creative financing if you're getting creative with the funding. Sure. You could, you, you know, could. I mean, you can so, borrow 100% of it from a private lender. Yeah. So mm -hmm. everyone is able mm -hmm. to get into creative financing some way or somehow. And that's kind of where, you know, I kind of wanted to steer a little bit more of this towards is, you know, there's a lot of people out there, they hear this word creative financing, they hear subject to, they hear this, and, but they don't know exactly how to bring it up to a seller. So one thing I wanted to ask was, is how do you bring it up to a seller like, I mean, how do you go about saying, hey, like for instance, if they're asking too much or their mortgage is too high to, to mm -hmm. sell for a cash offer, how do you go about talking to a, a seller about that? Well, typically, um, you know, it, it kind of depends on how I got to the seller, Randy. So okay. um, if I, so, like I don't go after subject twos actually. You could, okay. but I don't go after them. They just come to me. So mm. pretty much a wholesaler will bring me subject twos. That's where I get most of mine. Or okay. they're an offshoot of me looking for lease options. And then I realize they're not a good option candidate. So I go route B, which is like a sub two or a land, con not even a land contract. And I'll explain why. Um, so typically for me, my strategy started with lease options. That was my okay. journey. And I use a script that is essentially something very basic. I look for, for rent ads, okay? okay? And I'll I'll just essentially say, you know, like let's say you answer, I go, hello, mm -hmm. you know, and you're like, hello. And I go, hi, my name's Wendy. I was calling about your home for rent. Would you tell me a little bit more about it? And then you say, blah, 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 blah. And, or I'll ask you a question that's not already answered in the ad. Okay. okay? Because otherwise, like oh, it says, it's a three bedroom, you know, <laughs> or, <laughs> or how many square feet is it, or you know, when was it built? Like, you know, does it need any work, or you know, um, is it updated? You know, things that I I really do kind of want to know. But really, what I'm doing is I'm trying to ask them questions to get them to talk. Because the mm -hmm. more people talk and answer questions, the more they like you. Yep. And the more they might open up. Okay. It's like a rapport building thing. Mm -hmm. You know, but you also have to be able to read this, the owner, if they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're in a hurry or they don't want to get to the detail. Mm -hmm. You got to get to the point, you know, depending on the personality type. If there's someone who starts talking, sometimes they'll be like, oh my gosh, you know, well, it's a long story. And, you know, they start talking and, and I listen or, I mean, I've been invited over. I, I one <laughs> had a little lady one time invited me over for cookies one day, you know, she's like, can you just come over for cookies and milk? And I'll tell you all about it. You know, it's <laughs> like, okay. You know, <laughs> yep. but, um, you just never know where that conversation is going to go. And then you also get some people who are like, okay, yep, yep. Get to the point. What do you want? You know? Mm -hmm. So, but bottom line is I ask a bunch of questions and then I say something to the effect of like this. I'll say, gosh, Randy. And if I know your name, yep. if you say, if you said your name, or I might ask you during the conversation, like, what was your name again? <clears throat> you know, when you say Randy, then I'd say, at the end, I'll say, you know, Randy, um, I, your home, you know, it's, it sounds pretty interesting to me. I, I, it sounds really nice. Is there any chance that you might consider selling it? Mm -hmm. And that is shut up. And I count one, two, three, four, you know, and sometimes I'll say, no, never. I'm going to keep it for rental forever. Okay. Hey, if it, you're, if it ever changes, you know, I'm really looking for something I can rent now and buy later. If it ever changes, mm -hmm. would you just keep my number? Yeah. You never know when someone's going to call you. It could be, I've had people call me 10 years later, you know? So mm -hmm. give them your number, get their contact. You can also put them on a follow-up list. Call them in a year if you if you wanted to, like really have a mm -hmm. good system. Yeah. Put them in your CRM or if you have one or a spreadsheet or whatever you use, 
And then in a year, call them again. Because sometimes landlords are excited about being a landlord at some times in their life, but then something changes. They either get burned out, they have a bad tenant experience, their their spouse dies. Yeah. You, you don't know what's going they, They're ill. You, Every you day is a different day. Is. Yeah, yeah. So if you wanted, you could kind of keep them in there, especially if you had a good conversation, you know, mm -hmm. and call them back. But um, if I have about 30 to 50% of people, when I use that script, say yes to me. Okay. Over the last 30 years. And, and wow. that's in any state, in any market, any city, mm -hmm. anything. It's just, but you've got to know what to say. Now, that doesn't mean it's a good deal just because they say yes. Sometimes right. they'll say, well, yeah, for the right price. Well, that's a yes to me, mm -hmm. but it's also not a motivated seller, probably. Right. Okay, so I'm looking for the yes from a motivated seller. You know, someone who's, I'm really looking for that person who says, oh my gosh, yeah, actually, I really do want to sell it. I just, mm -hmm. you know, I just, it didn't sell in the market, so I thought I better rent it. I mean, it's on, my realtor just didn't sell it yet. Bam, that's, that's kind of the person I'm looking for, right? And it's yeah. so easy to make those calls. It's so easy. Boom, 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 boom. And um, and that, that's how I got, you know, that's how I got started with it. But then when I start meeting with someone and I, I see them or I see the mm -hmm. house or I do the background, for a lease option, I'm really looking for a seller who is motivated but not distressed. Okay. So they're not in trouble financially because see, mm -hmm. the, the title still stays in their name during that option period. Mm -hmm. So I don't want someone who's financially failing. Got you it. Know, oh, I'm moving out of my house because I lost my job and um, I can't make my payments and I'm moving in with my mom. Mm -hmm. That is a motivated distress seller. I might still buy it, but that might be the subject to. So then that might be where I cut out into sub two yeah. or something else. I got to get okay. them off the title because I don't want them screwing up the title during that time period. Right. Now, each one of these properties and each one of these the these ways lease options subject to uh, land contract they all have their pros cons things like right. that and it depends on from what i'm gathering from you it just depends on the answers from the seller and and their distress depends on the option that you go hence the word mm -hmm. creative yeah. you have to be on the spot try to figure out hey can we figure out where we can go as, as you're getting this information, okay, yep. uh, we just need to move. We need to get out there, but you know, we still have a mortgage that is close to retail. Yep. You know, um, okay. Well, what's your it's, mortgage details? You yes. Know? Yeah. It's um, it's it's starting to it's like exploring that with them, right? It's yeah. And it's just something that you 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 get a feel for based on the person, like you know, and yep. And it's and some sometimes people say, well, what exactly do you say to them? I, depends on the person and it depends on the situation. I go down a different path with each person based on their situation. Mm -hmm. But what I do is primarily ask questions. Yeah. And then it and leads me to my next question. Yeah, and you always make it a win-win deal. Mm -hmm. Win yes. for you and yep. win for them. They get yep. what they want, Yep. they get what they can, and you get what you need, okay? Yeah. For instance, I get this, feedback this question a lot for sub twos is because as you know i'm a wholesaler yeah. and so we deal a lot with with people coming through and asking you know we we put that on the table and we get well you know what about the uh do you want a sale clause you know um you know the the, the mortgage company is not going to want that you know or they're going to call the note due or this or that how do you get past that's a, one of the biggest questions yeah, my sellers rarely ever ask that. My students always ask that. I mean, every <laughs> okay. investor asks that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think if I've actually had a seller ever ask that. Well, maybe, maybe. not Maybe not in those words, but... Maybe. The, the thing what that it, the sellers worry about yeah. is... Well, wait a minute. Like, so the, you're not going to pay off my mortgage? And right. it's going to stay in my name? Yes, it's going to stay in your name. I'm going to make your mortgage payments, but it's going to be in your name, which could affect your ability to get a mortgage down the road. That's yes. usually their biggest concern from, from what I've seen. And yeah, and, and my, what's your feedback at least my people. Hmm? What's your What's your answer to them for that? I just, I'm, I'm really straight with people, Randy. I just, okay. I tell them the truth. Hey, yeah. 
It could affect your ability to get a mortgage down the road. Mm. Are you looking to buy another house soon? Now look mm -hmm. at, here's the thing. I, I had one recently. <laughs> the seller was like, well, we don't want the mortgage in our name a lot longer than like three years because we're going to buy another house. And I said, I forgot what, what was her first name. But anyways, and I said, whatever her name was, I go, Mrs. Seller, I go, you're not buying a house for a while. You just miss your last three payments. <laughs> you're not getting a mortgage for a while. You're going to yeah. have to rebuild your credit. But when I take over your sub, when I take over your property and start making your yep. mortgage payments, guess what? I'm going to pay perfectly. It's going to come out of my bank account on the first of every yes. month. And it's going to help restore your credit. It's not going to give you the ability to get a mortgage right away, but it is going to like take this blip and then make it blah, 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 again. Perfect, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect, perfect. It'll help raise your credit score. But when you miss three months in a row, yeah, it's kind of like pre foreclosure and you're not going to get a mortgage for a while. Normally, I pay you off within a couple of years mm -hmm. or pay off the mortgage, not them. I, I usually pay off the yeah, mortgage yeah, yeah. within a couple of years. Uh, however, I, I'm not going to guarantee that for you. So if that's a problem for you, I'm probably not the buyer for your home. Mm -hmm. So there is a, uh, there's a couple of things that I know if you do it through a servicer, like a servicing company, like make the payments yeah. through there and you do it through for a full year, they, with their next mortgage, all they got to do is take that to their mortgage company saying a servicer oh. has been paying this okay. and they'll take that off their debt to income ratio. Yes. I, I think even with the contracts, they could prove that yeah. I'm paying it. They may be able yes. to do that as well, but that's, yeah. that's, it's probably more legit that way. I don't yes. know. I haven't, it's interesting. The ones that I've done recently, the sellers weren't wanting to get a mortgage right away anyways, or they already had a new mortgage. They already qualified for two. They mm. didn't need to pay it off. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And, and that one you... that I did with that lady who wanted to, you know, she was like yeah. asking about that. I, I ended up selling it on the market because I wanted to wrap it. So I, yeah. it was a, I think a 3% interest rate. Okay. I don't really want to get rid of it because uh, the lower the interest, that's a good sub too, right? When it was yep. a, a low payment, but not only that, the lower the interest rate, the higher the portion of the payment that goes toward principal. So it's yep. like a double dip. You have a lower payment and more toward principal every month. So it's a huge, huge thing right now. That's why mm -hmm. I'm like so big on sub twos right now that there's they're such a huge opportunity because we have all those at low interest rate mortgages, if you can get that, your hands on those. But anyway. I, I have one of those 3%, so. Oh, you do? Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know? And and so I'm like, I'll just, you know, I'll wrap it. I mean, wrap it, which means like, yeah. I'll sell it on a land contract. I'm not gonna give it away in a sub two because mm -hmm. I, I will never give away someone else's deed. I won't do that. Right. Because I wanna protect that because it's in their name, that mortgage. So I'll sell it on a wrap, which means I'll sell it on a land contract and do a whole new financing thing for a buyer at mm -hmm. 7%. Okay. Do you know how one person offered on that land contract? And I only asked <laughs> like 15% down. And okay. my buyer, I had like three full price off over for asking offers conventional to cash me out. So <laughs> I took one, but it was weird. So I don't know, maybe that, you know, yeah. That was like a few months back. Maybe now yeah. it'll be better because those interest rates keep going up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room.